Customer service can make or break your reputation, especially if you're doing most of your sales online. So I've invited a longtime friend of mine, Jeremy Shapiro, to share with us some tips on how to automate your customer service while increasing all the good stuff, the retention, repeat business, referrals, and really it's about making your customers really happy. Hi, it's Melanie Benson Strick here, and I'm America's leading small business optimizer, and this is a weekly series where I like to show you how to optimize your business, how to take something and make it perform 10, maybe even 50, how about 100 times better, so that you can free up time for doing the things that you love the most and make more profits in the process. Now, my friend that I've invited here today is Jeremy Shapiro, and he's founder of a company called FuseDesk. And FuseDesk empowers entrepreneurs' commitment to excellence with an integrated help desk add-on for a software tool called Infusionsoft, which is a really powerful customer relationship management system that I use and I know tons and tons of other people use out there. And the reason why I wanted to have Jeremy come on, besides the fact that I just adore Jeremy and he's awesome at yoga and, you know, he's like just a great guy, <laughs> is that Jeremy is has got this tool that is making businesses perform so much better so it seemed natural to have him come on and uh, talk a little bit about how this works hey jeremy cool hey melanie thanks for having me sure so let's dig in and let's find out a little bit about what was the catalyst for you besides the fact that you're just a massively amazing software creator in the first place i've learned that about you over the years but what was the catalyst behind fusedesk <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, um, and great question. When uh, FuseDesk first started, it came out of a need in the marketplace. Um, I was just launching a new business, and um, we were launching this business online using Infusionsoft. Now, I'd known of and heard of Infusionsoft for years, and I'd committed that the next online business I start, instead of building the entire CRM backend system on our own, I wanted to use a product like Infusionsoft to run the entire backend, e-commerce, follow-up marketing, and more. Well, that was great, but what we found is for our team to take great care of our customers, we'd have to use a third-party system mm -hmm. or a suboptimal way of working with our customers. And we wanted to be known for having great service. Well, how do you do that? You need a great system. And so we started to identify what it was that would make for a great system. And every solution we looked at, and we, we evaluated dozens of options, everything was missing one key piece of the puzzle. It didn't integrate with Infusionsoft. It did, but it did a poor job taking care of the customers, difficult for the staff to use, and the issues mounted up. And so I was at a mastermind meeting of mine, and I was talking to some fellow folks there who had similar online businesses and, and shared my frustration that, you know, there doesn't seem to be a good option to offer great customer service that ties into Infusionsoft. And I saw a lot of nodding heads around the table saying, Jeremy, we feel the same way. So I said, well, what if we solved for that? What if I created a help desk for my own business that everyone else could use as well? And that was where we got our initial beta customers who said, Jeremy, if you build it, we want it so we can take great care of our customers too. And that really was the birth of FuseDesk. And within a very short period of time, we had a demo up and running online. And uh, our initial customers who started using it from day one are still with us to this day, four years later, um, as we've continued to grow the FuseDesk family and uh, take great care of our customers at the same time. That's so cool. And, and I've watched you evolve over the years. And all of a sudden, you know, I kept hearing about Fuse Desk, Fuse Desk, Fuse Desk. And I thought, wow, this is great. You know, you created something that out of the box and, and really in launch solved such a big problem that people had that it, it became like an overnight sensation, which, you know, that's like our dream, right? That's what everybody wants. Right. So what would you say? You know, it was, um, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why a customer service automation software like this is powerful. But, you know, what's the core thing that FuseDesk really does for its customers? Great question. So when you ask about um, what it does for our customers, you have to keep in mind with FuseDesk, we have three different customers, right? Okay. We have the business owner. Mm -hmm. Right, The business owner wants key metrics. Business owners want to know their customers are being taken care of. And business owners want an integrated system, so all the information is in one place. Our second customer is the customer support rep, the one actually using FuseDesk all day long. Which could so be the business owner in certain cases. <laughs> it can be the business owner, yeah. and as a lot of us grow, we start to hire maybe a virtual assistant to sure. help out or a part-time um, uh, support rep. And uh, for many of our clients that grow to our enterprise size and have you know a dozen plus dedicated support reps within the organization, right? And so whether it's you, the business owner, or your team of support reps, the system needs to be easy to use. 
right? And it has to save you a lot of time. So we cater to that customer as well. And the third is our customer's customer. The end customer that our customers are supporting wants to get their issues resolved. That's the bottom line. The last thing they want to do is have a new username and a new password to go log in to get one more system to update a ticket and read through things. Like That's the last thing any of us want to do as customers. What we want to know is that when we send a message or make a phone call or reach out to a company with a question or an issue, that it gets resolved. And so we cater to all three of those. So when you put a system like this in place, it, you, you're, you're leveraging something that you already have like Infusionsoft. Does your software work on other platforms or is it primarily just Infusionsoft at this point? We are built for Infusionsoft from okay. day zero. Okay. Um, there are a number of great help desk systems out there that I personally think are pretty decent. The challenge is they don't integrate deeply with Infusionsoft. Mm. And when you ask about you know, what is our edge and what is our difference in the marketplace, it really comes down to the tight integration with Infusionsoft. We're not a third party system that looks at Infusionsoft and says, well, how can we sort of have them talk? We're built on top of Infusionsoft and around. And this means a few things. It means for your, the, for your support reps, when they go to log into FuseDesk, they're using their Infusionsoft ID, the exact same credentials they use to log into Infusionsoft, but not creating more usernames and passwords. This means when, you're, when you and your team reply to customers, you have access to all of your Infusionsoft templates and merge fields and automation links and more. This means right from viewing a case, you can see who the customer is from Infusionsoft with all their contact information. All of your emails and notes and correspondence with the customer are stored on their contact record in Infusionsoft. You can apply tags, run automation, and more. Everything is built around Infusionsoft being the back end. No other platform out there comes even close to that kind of integration. And as a user, from the business owner perspective, I can't tell you how valuable that is to have that seamless integration and be able to have yeah. one place to go look for the information you need on a contact and, and where it's at. And you know, I think one of the biggest problems as a business owner or even as a customer service rep is knowing, okay, what is going on with this person who rose the red flag or said they needed something? Where did it go? And so you can go in and look at that data and see where's it at in the process? Does it need to be escalated to me? Is it being handled? And, and for me, having the peace of mind, knowing that I know my customer is being taken care of by my team properly and it's, it's come to conclusion and what that conclusion was is so invaluable to me yeah. being able to keep focused on the things that I do best. Correct. Correct. What we see out there, Melanie, is typically folks have um, one of four different setups, right? On the simplest side, like you were sharing, the solopreneur, for example, might just have uh, you know an email inbox that is monitored by the business owner or one person, and, um, and, and, and that's how support's taken care of. And as you grow, you have more people sort of log into the same email account. Hmm. Well, you don't have any of the automation. Email doesn't have any reporting. You may be able to record some of the emails, but you end up doing a lot of additional work, and you have a lot of people working in the same shared environment, which is not really ideal. It's not a true help desk environment. One step up is you have your same, maybe your support at mycompany.com, info address, et cetera, forward to a few people. Now at that point, you're scaling, mm -hmm. right? You have multiple, multiple people getting the same email message. They're now saying, you know, hey, did you get the email from Bob? Are you taking care of that? Okay, no. Are you doing that one? Oh, no, I responded to him. And you have a lot of communication sort of over the cubicle wall. Not efficient, not scalable, and still no key metrics reporting and all the other challenges you have with different logins and all. The closest you can get is a third-party help desk system, right? which now suddenly you can transfer cases and escalate them. You can run different macros and things like that, and your team can collaborate on cases. But here's what a day in the life of your reps look like there. An email comes into the help desk. They look at the information. They look at the email address or customer name. They go to Infusionsoft, look up the customer by name, try the email address, try the phone number, all that. See the customer's information, find out the backstory, go back in, copy the message, put it back into Infusionsoft, go grab information like maybe a login, username, password, go back to the help desk, and as you can see, there's up, back, up, back, all over the place just to take care of a simple customer request. The fourth option, which is where we fit in, is with FuseDesk. Now what you, what you have is a customer support rep sees a case from a customer, sees what the issue is, on the same screen sees the customer contact information, responds to the customer, uses a template, leverages automation and Infusionsoft, all from one simple two-screen system, right? All that correspondence is inside of Infusionsoft, all the information is there. The rep with a few simple clicks is taking care of the customer and moving on to the next case, providing a personalized human interaction with that customer. Everybody wins that way. Yeah.
And, you know, you're winning over my heart here because, as we've talked about Fused Dust before, I, I love anything that frees up our time from places where things can break down or bottleneck to really being able to serve our customers well. And, yes. you know, um, I, I know you are really committed to customer excellence. You know, over the years I've known you, you've just been extraordinary. You, you, you jump in and you've given me so many resources and tools and just, you know, Melanie, how can I help you? And, you, you know, your commitment to customer excellence has always just like super impressed me. <laughs> and I know I'm, a, I'm committed to that as well. And so, you know, when people are committed to customer excellence, what's one tip you could give them in, in being able to use a tool like this effectively? Yeah, so it, the tool is is a how, right? Mm -hmm. The tool helps you to get something done. But the bigger question is, what is your commitment to your customers? And what is the level of excellence that you want to hold yourself to? Now, for some companies, um, you know, in the online marketing space, for example, it's easy to sort of create a product, throw it out there, sell it, and not even have a way for your customers to reach you. Right? God, that drives me crazy like, too. <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, don't you love when you get an email and it comes from like no reply at some exactly. point? Exactly. Right? Or you can't find contact information anywhere. Like, are you a real company? <laughs> right. Or like you email and you get a bounce back. Like, you know, you cannot email us. You have to go here and create right. an account and log in and open a ticket. And you're like, I just have a question. How complicated is this? Right? So, you know, you, you need to look at what your commitment is to, to, to serving your customers. And once you figure that out, what barriers can you remove for your customers and for your team to enable your team to take great care of those customers? For example, have you had the experience of emailing a company to, uh, with a request, you then get an email back that says, like, here's your ticket number, respond above this line but not below this line, don't use this font color, log in here, and you get all these instructions, and, and you're looking at this thing thinking, I, I just had a question, can someone help me out, right? And then that rep responds back, and you get an email back that has your email message, a whole bunch of extra instructions, and somewhere buried in there is like the rep's response, and you're searching for it in the email. Like, that's not a great experience for the end customer. Maybe it keeps things easier for the reps, but if it's not serving the customer, it's making things more complicated. Yeah. Simplify, keep it human, and keep the customer first. I love that. Simplify, which is another one of my favorite concepts. Uh, simplify, what was the second thing? Simplify, keep it human, keep it human. And keep the customer first. Keep the customer and first. What yeah. I mean by keep it human is that that's one of our mantras that we talk about a fair amount uh, when we do our trainings with customers. That it, it's it's easy to have an email come from like you know a technical support team, right? Right. But one of the things we have set up in FuseS by default is when your team responds back, the email address might be support at info at help at one of those email addresses, but the from name is the name of the rep. So when the customer gets an email back, it's coming from Jeremy Shapiro, Bob Smith, Susie Smith, etc., and they're interacting with a real person. That email is signed by a real person. And so instead of getting a generic, you know, technical support team or a dear customer, thank you for your email, it's, hey, Melanie, thanks so much for your email. Here's an answer to your question, etc. Anything else I can do to help you out, let me know. Signed, Jeremy Shapiro. There's a system behind the scenes, but the interaction in feels like someone's getting back to you from their iPhone at the airport taking care of you that moment right then and there in a very smooth one-on-one -on -one experience. Love it. Love it. Jeremy, we could go on and on and on about this tool and how awesome it is. And I know you've got uh, such a great way that you serve business owners, but I want to get to know Jeremy a little bit more and, and kind sure. of pull back the curtains because obviously you put out a really successful business, but it's not your first business. No. And I would consider you somewhat of a serial entrepreneur in the sense that you have this knack and ability to, to see things that, that you can create solutions to. What has been one of your biggest challenges as a entrepreneur that's, that's you know, been called to keep putting out software programs and tools and, and new businesses over the years? So when I, when I think about the, the challenges side of it, um, you know, going back to, you know, my earliest business, you know, I, I've always had my own businesses. Um, you know, even in high school, I'd launched a consulting business from there. Mm -hmm. um, didn't finish college due to one of, one of my businesses growing and trying to balance uh, continuing, a, continuing a school course load and growing my business. And I took a semester off and said, you know, I, I'll come back. And that was, well, over a decade ago. But, <laughs> um, you know, so I, I, I've always been growing my own businesses. And, you know, early on when you start out, especially when you're younger, it's pretty common to sort of bootstrap a business and, and be a jack of all trades, do everything it takes to get it done, right? 
And as a solopreneur, that's very different than being a business owner. It's very different than you know having a public company or anything in between that, right? And so starting out, you do a bit of everything. And as you grow, in order to, to reach certain you know um, um, growth milestones, it's necessary to bring in other key team members to take on responsibilities. And sometimes letting go of those responsibilities or allowing someone else who is better at you than things to take over and run them, um, you know, is, is, is a growth challenge. Um, you know, so, so I, I would challenge our, our viewers and listeners here to, um, to do that, which is take a list. I have it. Um, it's called uh, Stuff That Jeremy Doesn't Need to Be Doing. <laughs> and it's just a, a Google Doc that I have. And as I come across something that I don't need to be doing or I shouldn't be doing, I just throw it on a list, get it off my mind, and onto the document. Periodically, I come back to that and, and ask, who can I task this to? Whether it's a third-party company or a vendor, whether it's someone on, a, someone on our team, or whether it's a new hire that we need to find, um, it's a matter of allowing ourselves to grow and have someone else doing things in the business um, better than I can be doing them so, so that I can focus on different parts of the business. So find a way to grow by removing items from your plate and, uh, and having someone uh, who, who has passion around those uh, to get those done with you. Well, you know, you're speaking one of my favorite uh, uh, words there, which is delegation and, you know, getting yes. the things off your plate that you're not good at. And, you know, I think that brings up the reverse, which is optimizing. You know, this, this show and everything yes. I'm about is about optimizing. And I, one of the things that I learned was is that when you figure out how to do, you know, a few things really, really well, you're actually going to be able to get higher levels of trajectory. You're going to be able to get more momentum and you're going to actually have more fun in the process. And it's, you know, it's like when we're trying to do everything all the time, that things really bottleneck, you know, have you found a place where something that you discovered or learned along the way, and you really could optimize that side of the operations or that side of the marketing really made the big difference. It was maybe like a turning point for you. Yeah. So for uh, for me, one of them um, was hiring. Mm. Um, I, I don't enjoy the process of writing up job descriptions, of screening and interviewing and background checking. Like there, there's nothing in that whole area that I that I derive any pleasure from whatsoever. Um, it's one of those things. I'll find a reason to go retar the roof and pave the driveway before I, you know, <laughs> get out there and, and start hiring. I, I will find things to clean. I will, you know, I, I will do what needs to be done to avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's obviously a stumbling block. Um, you know, as I grew my team, we found someone who actually was really good at figuring out the job postings, really good at screening, interviewing, and hiring. Um, to the point that we have new members that come on our team that I personally haven't met before they're hired or even talked to or interviewed. Mm. And what's been powerful about that is we're able to figure out what we need as a team and someone else can take care of that hiring aside who enjoys it and is really good at it. Um, that I found was a, was a total optimization and a total win for, for all of us. So are you saying optimizing the hiring process yes. or optimizing your time doing things that you are better at and more suited at or both? Um, both, but leaning more heavily towards the former, which is yeah. optimizing our, our hiring process. And, and as we've gone through, the, through this a few times, there's, there's a model out there which I like, which is, which is called like the, um, like the HR bench model, that the positions you have in your company, you're sort of always hiring for. It's not a matter of, oh, we need someone now, let's go hire them. Mm -hmm. It's having the posting out there periodically, and you get interested parties. And you know what? If you found someone who, even though you weren't hiring for a spot right now, was really great and you'd love to have them on the team, would you find a way to get them on your team? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you'd find a home for them somehow, right? And so by having that, that hiring system in place, you're less reactive um, in terms of, oh my gosh, we're growing, we need someone, or oh, somebody quit, we need someone, or you know, any of these things, right? You have an available talent pool that is ready, able, and willing to work with you. And, um, and, and once you have sort of that job posting and candidate pool part taken care of, figuring out what is your screening process, what is the process you move folks through based on different positions, et cetera. Well, I think that's fantastic because a lot of people do the, what I call the get hire method, which is like going out on a first date and they just hire somebody that makes them yeah. feel all woo woo inside. <laughs> so I love that you really, even though you're not good at it, you really optimize this process so you are hiring the top talent, you're hiring people that are right for you, you're hiring people that are sure fit for the roles that really make the company work well. So that's a great tip. I love that you shared that. Super. Um, Jeremy, do you ever have the 
phase where you're kind of questioning whether it's all going to work or whether you want to keep doing this? <laughs> you know, we, um, uh, th there are certainly challenging days out there, um, for sure. But, uh, you know, one thing we've really worked on as a team is a lot of our strate strategic planning. Mm. Um, you know, so I'll share with you an inter interesting story. Um, we've read a lot of the same books. Um, we have a lot of the same, um, you know, friends and mentors out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure one thing you've heard often is, you know, uh, you know, core values and your mission and your vision, purpose, those sorts of things, right? Well, you know, I'd heard for years how important this stuff is, but I never had a roadmap for here's how to figure out what the core values are for a company. It was always sort of like, you know, a hey, you should have these. And I kept asking, like, well, okay, I get it, I agree, but what is the process for finding it? Well, we finally discovered a process and, and worked through that of as a team collaborating and figuring out what some of those core values are, um, the core purpose, et cetera, and starting to build from there. And that's been a really powerful process. Hmm. That's given us some, um, some guidelines such that when, it, when there is one of those difficult days or difficult decisions, it's no longer a question. We can look back to sort of our guiding principles and say, well, no, th th this, is, you know, this is where we fall on this issue, and we're able to move through that and, uh, and have a longer-term, bigger vision picture on that. So this is awesome. I've been doing core values work for years because as a coach, that's one of the things we're trained to do is to yeah. first of all look at our values and then to help elicit the values of our clients. But a lot of people are like, why does this matter? This is like so boring. Make money, make money. But what it sounds like is that your values and having clear clarity about what the values are of the business, not just for Jeremy, right. is a way to stay connected to the bigger why. Why do yes. we do this and why do we keep going on the days where it's really tough? Right. Well, so I'll share with you an example. You know, one of our one of our core values is do the right thing, mm -hmm. right? And so, if an issue comes up and uh, and the team comes to me or gets together and says, "Hey, what should we do about the situation?" It's pretty easy to turn back and the and the answer is another question, which is, "What's the right thing to do here?" And that usually is a pretty clear as day answer about what direction to go on that. And and you'll notice the right thing to do is never about the profitability side. It's never about the short term vision. It's always the bigger picture. Look. We're all humans here. We're all people. What is the right thing to do? And that usually makes the, the decision pretty clear. Love it. I love it. So do you have a mantra or quote that is a favorite of yours to help keep the inspiration high? <laughs> um, um, I'm not so sure uh, maybe on the, on the inspiration side, but, you know, one thing um, that, that I learned growing up from, uh, um, you know, from my family and all was, you know, uh, if you're going to do something, do it right. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting, as we were having a prep call before our team got together um, to, to start diving into our core values, we were discussing, um, uh, discussing the rollout of a new feature that some of our customers were, were looking for. And my team was asking me, you know, Jeremy, from a development standpoint, um, you know, what's the delay in getting this to market? Can we just roll this out? And I sort of answered saying, well, we could do it that way, but there's a bigger picture here we want to look at um, to really take better care of our customers and the true need that they have would require us to do it this way, which is more complicated, takes more time, et cetera, but it's the right way to do it. And when we do something, we do it right. And one of my team members said, you know, well, Jeremy, I, th I think that's one of our first core values right there. When we do something, we do it right. And, uh, and, and that rings true, and it's something that, you know, we hearken back to quite a lot. I love it. I love it. So um, one last question before we wrap up. Mm -hmm. If you could give one piece of advice to someone who's got a big idea and they want to get it out there, having been someone who started multiple businesses, what's the one thing they need to do to help make that a great hit coming out of the door? Get it to market now. Minimum mm -hmm. viable product. Don't overthink it. F figure out what your bigger vision is. Execute for the minimum possible option to get to market and let it either fail fast or take off. But better to learn that now than in two years while you're working on the perfect mousetrap. I love it. I love it. So let's remind everybody where they can find out more about Fuse Desk and how that solution, especially if you're an Infusionsoft user, how Fuse Desk can uh, serve your customers and make your business run more smoothly. FuseDesk.com? Yep. FuseDesk.com is where we're at. Um, you can reach out to our team at support at FuseDesk.com, and uh, our team will be there to uh, help provide you with that wild customer experience. Um, and for sure, FuseS.com is a great place to find out more about who we are and what we do. I love it. I love it. Great. Thank you, Jeremy, so much. Thanks for some great tips and insights. And as always, if there's been something that really gave you an aha or something that you went, yeah, that's what I need to do, we'd love to hear it here on the show page at MelanieBensonStrick.com. And if you want to tune into iTunes, if you're following us on my site, you can find us at MelanieBensonStrick.com 
forward slash podcast. All right, everybody, we'll see you again next week. And thanks so much, Jeremy, for being a hot and fast topic today. Bye, everyone.